Shack is one of the most powerful structures in the entire game of Dead by Daylight. You can find this on every single outdoor map in the entire game, and even variations of it on some indoor maps. You can truly get a lot of value from this structure when you run it properly. How to do this is to get the killer at a sweet spot in terms of distance, not too far and not too close. The slow walking around corners can really help this and make it almost impossible for them to hit you. You're probably wondering why you don't want a lot of distance, and there is an easy answer for that. If you're not planning to run away and you want to loop Shack, you can't have a lot of distance because that gives the killer options to do a simple readjustment to their pathing to get a hit on you. When the killer's in the proximity of you and chase, it's really a gamble on doing a mind game since this could give you an extreme amount of distance to leave Shack or just waste their time in general. Shack is also one of the best structures in the entire game for shift teching. Shift teching is a way to get more than three window vaults since you never initiate the chase. You can do this by walking when the killer can see you and then running when they cannot. It's a weird mechanic to get down, but once you get it, it becomes a lot easier. And I also have a video of me doing this very recently if you would like to check it out. Okay, now we're getting onto the drawn part of this section. So here's the key in the template right here that you can use. Killer is red, survivor is blue, the palette is yellow, and the window is green. We got the shack structure right here from an aerial point of view. Here's the palette, here's the window. I mean, I think you guys will be able to tell from looking at this. So, in my opinion, the best way to run this tile is running it. Oh, my bad. <laughs> this is my first one I'm doing. The best way to run this, in my opinion, is running it like this. This is definitely where you want to run it the most while the killer is chasing you this way. It's really easy to go across. You can see their light, their stain when they come through the door, and you can see their stain right here. Let's say if the killer does a mind game and I'm right here, and the killer's doing a mind game over here. Sometimes what I like to do is I usually expect the killer to like not show the red light around here and then I vault the last second I see them because they always show their body and it's always a safe vault if you have good enough distance and you can fast vault properly. I'll usually vault this. However, it's not uncommon for me to go towards the pallet a little bit and try and look through this window. There's usually a broken down board window around here and you can see if the killer wants to go back inside. However, most killers do go through this way and I like to vault right here mainly because when you're right here, this is your survivor, remember, and the killer is right here, I feel like the killer can hit you a lot easier when you end up right here at the end, you know? This is you, and the star is you afterwards. So that's why I like to vault it first instead of going towards the window, but depending on the killer, it's sometimes not a bad idea to go there. Like with a Huntress, it can be a great idea to actually go towards the pallet a little bit because if you do vault this, the Huntress can pull up immediately going over there and they'll probably hit you unless you go into a locker. But we all know that most Huntresses do run Iron Maiden, so if you are healthy, it's not the best idea. So it's like, it really depends on the killer, but I like to do that personally and I kind of recommend doing that to everyone. It's not a bad idea to go through the backside of Shack as well. You can always make it to the pallet if the killer is decent enough distance from you. I personally like to go on the backside of Shack once again when it's a Huntress or a range killer, usually a pyramid head, one you don't like to take windows against a lot. The crane is a structure that can spawn on every single auto haven map. This structure is very strong since the pallet gives you a lot of distance. However, the structure can be mind game fairly easily for the killer for a quick pallet drop. The key to this structure is to stay patient. If you have been looping the killer for a good amount of time in the match and you found that they tend to mind game a lot, then your best bet is to fake the window then hit it a few seconds after you fake. You could also slow ball and that can throw the killers off a little bit, but if they do go down around the pallet, they will see you. When looping around the crane, you can slightly look up and see the killer. And if you're healthy and you get mind game it's best to leave the pallet up even if the killer is going to get a free hit since the tile is almost useless without the pallet and getting hit through the window is also not the worst thing in the world since you get a lot of distance and they get stuck up there now crane is also a really strong structure but it can also be very easy to mind game depending on how good the killer is now here's the thing this is the ramp going up right and this is like the little platform then this is the room this is the ground this is the cars i tried my best man you know <laughs> i'm doing this in ms paint not even photoshop so when you go up this ramp right and let's say the killer is over here i don't like to run this tile first in the game because you don't know what the killer is gonna do they could do a lot of different things and they usually hit you first right However, if I ran this killer on another structure and I figured out that they mind game a lot, what I will usually do a lot is wait half a second up here, like usually a second or two, and the killer more than likely will go through here to see if you vaulted. Now, if you have a lot of patience and you don't have anxiety and you don't get scared, you can wait up here a long time because sometimes they expect you to wait up here and then vault it right away. So what you can do to 
throw them off is slow vaulting this. Now, if you slow vault this, the killer, you might catch a really good timing while the killer is going up the ramp. And when you slow vault it, you have all this distance to work with, all of this, right? And that's really good. Now, if the killer catches you off guard, though, you already slow vaulted this, you're down here. You have a little bit of a stutter. It's not too bad, but you have a little bit of stutter. And they're right here, and they catch you. This isn't the worst thing in the world, too, because if you hold this really tightly, you can usually go up the ramp again. Just make sure you go a little bit farther to the left because they can hit you when you're going up the ramp. You can either go up this, sorry, car went by. I don't know if you guys heard that. Or you can hit the pallet. You can also look up. You will always be able to see them if you look up. That was the pain is a structure that spawns on Haddonfield in every single bad variant. Getting distance is not hard at all for Survivor on this structure, but what you really want to do is identify where the windows are on the top floor before really going into the basement, and that's where you can get the best value out of this structure. If you know where the windows are for looping, the House of Pain truly becomes its name for the killer, and watch out for killers trying to mind game what stairs to go down, so slow walking around corners is recommended. Honestly, slow walking. Just walking in general is the best thing for almost every single structure in this game. And uh, the strongest window spawn is usually the one where you can fast fall at the top of the stairs. Keep an eye out for the fence windows too, since they can bail you out if you're in trouble. And the fence window vaults are usually small long walls and can be really useful to chain to other loops and other pallets for gaining distance. The harvester is a structure that spawns in every single cold wind farm variant. This one is a fun one. It's been nerfed too many times to be counted, but it's still pretty good. You have two windows that will always be on the top, left, and right. The window on the left is a drop down where you cannot vault back. However, the one on the right is a vault that leads to a hay bale where you can vault back. If the killer you are facing mind games a lot, one of my favorite ways to loop it is the fake going right and then go left. Then wrap around to the front of the harvester or go to another tile spawn. If you do vault right first, just keep in mind you have only three vaults and a good killer can make those three vaults go fast. Now, this is the hay bale section. I tried to like make this the best I could. I don't know how to draw a harvester from an aerial point of view. Let's say this is like the main harvester part, you know, like the, the claw. And this is the hay bale. So you can see what I'm trying to... I, I hope you guys can understand. This is the drop down part. So like, this is up to you, right? If, the ki if you have a lot of distance in the killer, you can always fake going this way. And they might go onto the hay bales. The killer might drop onto the hay bales. And then you do all quick. And then you hit this. That can work, but it doesn't work all the time, right? You can also just hit this and then keep hitting it back and forth. Or what you can do, there is a hay bale right here. And if you drop down onto it and you don't move, you can avoid the hits. Now, it's a glitch here and there. It happens. Sometimes it's in the game, sometimes it's not. It's just something to keep note of. So yeah, the harvester, there's not too many different ways to vault it or loop it anymore. I reminisce on the days when you were able to just go on the hay bales yourself without having to hit the window vault. Man, those were, those were the fun days. I love those. The cow tree. The cow tree was recently nerfed, actually. Um, me recording this video, like getting the footage, I have footage before the nerf, but the structure is a lot smaller now. Um, it's also a structure that spawns in every single cold wind farm variant. The cow tree is a tricky one to loop properly because there's a lot of variables in the chase, such as what killer you're versing, bloodlust, and if they mind game. There are a lot of tricks killers can play on you, such as movement that can make you get hit if you're not paying attention and force you to throw the pallet or take a hit. Though so this is uh, the cow tree now. Okay, so the best way to loop this now is definitely just going through here and then hitting the vault. It's a lot shorter now, so you can get mind game. A lot of killers will stand around the pallet side and the way for you to vault so they can go around to get a hit on you because if you do vault this, you have to go this way around, which makes it really hard to get a fast vault back on this window or even get to the pallet in the first place, especially since it's a lot shorter now. Now we're gonna get into the best tiles, actually the easiest ones to run. So these are more technical tiles in the game. These are the best tiles slash easiest to run, I feel, out of all the tiles in the game. These should be probably your bread and butter as a survivor. Also keep in mind that these tiles are similar on every single map. The only difference is some are taller and you can see through them. Besides Auto Haven, and I, I don't know why, I guess it makes sense. Auto Haven has a lot of filler pallets, but yeah, Auto Haven's long walls are shorter and the short walls are harder to fast vault. So just keep that in mind when you play on Auto Haven. It's like the only one that's like has the worst tiles out of all of them. But like every other one, Ormond, Coldwind, Macmillan, they're all pretty decent. They're all similar. 
Long walls spawn on most outdoor maps. It's a very fun tile to run and has very basic mechanics. On this tile, you have a window on the strong long wall part, and on the other side of the tile, you have a pallet. This pallet is extremely safe since the killer has to break it to get a hit, and the window is also extremely safe besides, well, auto haven, like I said before. Quick way you can identify a long wall and a short wall is by looking where the pallet spawns. If the pallet is spawning on the right side where the long wall window would be, that's a short wall. If it's on the left side, if you're coming from it from the front, it's always going to be a long wall. That's a really quick way to look at it. The window and the pallet always spawn across from each other. Now, the long wall is personally one of my favorite tiles in the entire game. It's really easy to run, simple mechanics, and it's just perfect for you to master. So like I said in the explanation part, you can always tell which one is a long wall based on where the pallet is. So if you're coming from this section, you're like, oh, what, what is it? What tile is it? If there's not a pallet on the right side and there's no broken shards, if it's on the left side, it's always a long wall. It's always going to be parallel from each other. It's never on the same side. So it's always like this. I guess that's parallel adjacent. I, I don't know. You guys know what I mean. So there's many different ways to run this tile. In my opinion, the best way to run it probably would be in the best case scenario. You don't want the killer to mind game you through this part. But like, let's say the killer just follows you blindly. This would be the best way to loop it. That would be where you get the most value. So most of the time you're gonna be looping this tile like this. You're gonna be hitting this vault. And the killer is gonna be mind gaming you from this section right here. So the killer, this little line right here is really broken. And this isn't on auto haven, but this little section right here, like on farm maps or Macmillan, it helps you a lot because it gives you a lot of time to react. So when the killer is right here, you can definitely just vault it, you know what I mean? Or if you see the killer on this side, you can just vault it right away. The outside is really easy to fast vault. The inside's a little bit harder, it's a little bit more tricky. But if you use this little wall right here, you can always get a fast vault. If you bump your body on that wall, you can always get a fast vault that way. And that's usually the marker I take from it. Short walls also spawn on most outdoor maps. This tile is not as strong as a long wall or the trash pile. We will get into that one in a little bit, but it's still very good and just takes a little bit more experience to run. This tile you will mess up on a lot. Um, killers are really good at mind gaming in this one. I noticed killers mind game the most on short walls, but uh, once you gain the knowledge, you can usually waste a lot of time on it before getting hit. And if you want, you could throw the pallet and get a lot of value from it. Walking is definitely required on this loop and also knowing how to fast hole everything helps so much. So really, if you don't know how to fast fall everything, going into a custom matchmaking with a friend and just going on some hard tiles to fast vault or going into a, a practice with bots helps so much. And I really do recommend it. I couldn't recommend it enough, honestly. Now the short wall, you really want to slow walk around these areas, right? These are the areas you want to slow walk around. These ones that I drew. These are the areas you want to slow walk around because if the killer is on this side and you're over here, on this one they can easily mind game you if you're running down here towards the bottom and then look what happens that's a hit but if you slow walk from this point to this point and you don't see the killer coming on this side then you know for a fact that they're trying to mind game you this way and if I were you, I would stay towards the window for a medium vault, or you can go for a long wall, or better off, you can run away, because you got a lot of distance if they do that mind game. It's a very risky mind game that a lot of killers do on that side, and just keep an eye for it. Fast folding this, if you can learn how to fast fault this, you can be a god on this window. Um, it's the hardest on auto haven. In my opinion, the best way to loop this is just like this. Trash tiles spawn on most realms now. It's known to be like the Ormond and Yamaoka loop. I mean, that's what I remember it for. This loop is super easy to run if you know how to look behind you. It's easy to mind game, but if you don't panic and look behind you, it's always safe. What I mean by this is that the pallet is easily accessible and can almost always be reached by survivor. This is why you want to look behind you though. Since most killers know you can always make it, they'll try their best not to get stunned by the pallet. So only throw it down if you know you can get a stun. If you don't get the stun, try and run around the back wall and get a vault on the pallet or window if you have the distance. Like I said, this pallet is really easily accessible. Even if you mess up on the window and they mind game you, you can almost always get to it. Please, learn to look behind you. I know if it's, it could be awkward. 
I know it can be awkward to look behind you, and it's a weird feeling at first, but once you get it, I swear to you, this game is so much more enjoyable. Now, it's called the trash tile because of the bin of fire in the middle. It's not because it's trash. It's very, very strong. You really want to run this loop like this. You want the killer to be on this side while they're following you. They can either do, uh, they can go straight at you thinking they can get the hit, which they usually can't, or they'll go around this side more than likely so when they go on that side you run this way you can hit the vaults again or you can go towards the pallet depending on how much distance you have as you can see it's pretty easy to get to this pallet right here so when you are at this pallet please look behind you because the killer more than likely will go all the way around while you throw the pallet and they'll hit you and you look like an ass to your teammates i, I can't count the amount of people i've seen just not look behind them and just waste this pallet when they could easily get a stun or <laughs> they could just run around the back while they're doing a mind game and then almost always hit this window again you always hit the window you can always hit it if the killer mind games you like that and if you for some reason can't look how little distance you need just to get back to the pallet and if the killer mind games you again you do the same thing game is game all right now we're getting to some of the harder tiles to run in my opinion these are the hardest tiles in the game to loot for any survivor my goal is to equip you as much information that can help you on these tiles the main problem with these tiles is that they're killer dependent and there's like 32 killers in the game i think so yeah just <laughs> just keep that in mind i'm gonna be honest i really don't know how to run these labyrinth gems are found on ormond and the yamaoka variants and they're absolute shit to run i'm not gonna sugarcoat it right usually it results in the survivor getting hit um, try and look for other tiles around this and maybe when you get hit you can run to another tile There are a ton of blind spots on this one And I'm just gonna guarantee that you're not gonna be the only one confused on this tile as well So keep that in mind. So the labyrinth gym <laughs> I'm gonna do my best for this one. Okay, your main goal is to win this 50 50 in this spot right here I personally like to loop it going this way when I can get an actual loop However, the killer will try its best to mind game you right here if they understand the tile. When this happens, you can go all the way around to the pallet. You might make it, you might not. I'm not gonna lie, Lavender Gym is just so weird. I really don't know how to loop it properly. This is probably the only tile in the game I genuinely don't know anything about. This is the variant gym, but we'll get onto that one when we get to it. But uh, yeah, it's just a weird tile. Keep in mind, like I said in the explanation, the killer is probably going to be just as confused as you are, so you're not going to be alone in that situation. So just memorize what it looks like from an aerial view, and then it'll probably be easier for you to run. Next we got the Z walls. These walls are found on the outer edges of most maps. These are the tiles you go to if you have nothing around you or you get zoned. And there's a lot of zone killers in this game, so once you get better at the game, you'll find yourself using Z walls a lot. The Z wall is very killer side of tiles, so trying to be unpredictable is your best bet. Double vaulting is great, FOV text can work, and sometimes if you're lucky, you can get three vaults on the Z wall. There's not much to draw here. Um, it's just how you loop it, or you can loop it this way. Personally, I like doing it the first way I did with the arrow. More often than not, a killer will do everything in their power to mind game you. So if you're about to vault this, they're going to double back. So yeah, I don't even know why I did a drawing part for the Z wall. <laughs> It's just a Z-Wall, dude. It's just luck, honestly. It really is luck. There's a little bit of skill to it, I will say that. It's like, uh, it's like poker, you know? There's a little bit of skill, but ultimately, come on, dude. There's there's a lot of luck to it. Come on. t &Ls are probably the best tile in the hardest tile category since it's the closest to a 50-50. I still believe that t &Ls are more killer-sided, but there are ways to make it survivor favored. I'm going to leave this up for the drawing instead of just explaining it. The good old LNT wall. Now, this is a perfect one to show in drawing because there's a lot of different ways you can run this. If the killer is running you this way, you can either fake this window vault or you can wrap around. Personally, I usually hit the window vault immediately to get a feel of what the killer is doing. But let's say I don't hit this, right? And I, I go off and the killer mind games me this way. Well, the next thing you should do is immediately cut back and hit this window. A good killer will push you, however, on the opposite side. When I mean the opposite side, I mean they'll try and make you loop this way. Now, looping this way is really difficult because now they have control of the entire board. And this is why I say it's a killer-sided board 
in my opinion, just a little bit, just a little bit more killer sided than Survivor. If a killer does push you this way, they now have two options and the two options are reliant on you. This is always relying on you. If you vault this, they're most likely going to double back and hit you. But if you go all the way around, you now have the option to fake this window or to vault it. You usually will be able to get around and this is where the 50-50 part comes in with the LNT wall. If you're on this side and they're really close, are they going to double back or are they going to actually come around and hit you? It's all up to you at that point. I can't tell you what to do. This isn't exactly how to loop perfectly in every scenario because obviously i don't loop perfectly in every scenario the best survivor aaron doesn't do that you know what i mean it's all it's all improvising all of it's improvising but what i will say personally what i will do in this situation is just faking it i feel better faking it than just vaulting it and feeling like an idiot and losing to a mind game that's how i would do it if i fake it i'll either go all the way around or i'll hit this window usually i'll hit this window and try and get the distance and loop the proper way dead by daylight looping especially in 5050s is like a tug of war battle you're always trying to gain power and control of the situation and i think trying to avoid the mind games is usually the best way to go across most loops in the game next we're going into the 50 50 tiles just like i said for the tnls it's close to 50 50 but I don't think it is 50-50. These tiles really separate a good survivor from a decent one. A 50-50 tile or loop, if you haven't gotten a gist of it at this point in the video, are tiles that can be mind gameable by both survivors and killer. The first one in the 50-50 tiles are four lanes. Four lanes can be found on every single outdoor map and consist of one pallet, one window. The window can be found either on the inner wall or the one on the outside. I personally like the outside window the most, but the inner window isn't bad at all, actually. It actually makes it easier to get to the pallet, in my opinion. Four lanes, like like most other tiles require a lot of knowledge on the killer and their blind spots. Four lanes are often run the same way, so even just a little mind game on your part can really throw a killer off. All right, we got the four lane wall, but the inside window. Personally, I would like to run it from this side every single time if I could, and then go up and around like that. But like I said, that's best case scenario. That's not gonna happen most of the time. Let's say you are coming from the pallet side. Um, try and hit this window. A killer might expect that and try and cut you off and go all the way around. So keep an eye for that. You should always look where the killer is on the structure. If you know where the window is and you can identify it, you are golden. I am promising you that. Depending on what map you are on, it's really easy to fast fault from the inside as well. And the reason why I say it's easy to fast fault in the inside is because you should be able to fast fault this on most variants besides Auto Haven. If you can learn on Auto Haven, then dude you're doing great if you can fast vault this window consistently on auto haven you're going to be an unstoppable survivor i really recommend people going into custom matchmaking and practicing it just learning where the fast fault prompt comes up and how to time it properly and staying patient and chase it's all about being if you can get this window vault fast fault every time you're doing great most of the time killers don't expect that they try and get a medium hit and if they do expect it well, you still have enough distance because it's a fast vault to get to this pallet right here. This is the outside version. Now the outside version, I try not to play inside as much. I try and stay on the outskirts because it's easier to get to the pallet in the window, of course. Um, trying to vault it like that is probably the best way if the killer is over here. Remember, they can mind game you inside, so just know where you're going. Sometimes you have to go back out and hit this window, or maybe you get hit, or maybe you have to go to an another structure. Four lanes are usually near filler pallets, so it's not the worst if you have to leave the structure, but that's personally the way I would run it. A pallet gym is just a tile with one pallet. That's it. These can be looped on most times, but you have to throw the pallet to avoid getting hit. You really want to use this pallet over any other pallet since it's not the best, and it's really a great pallet to go to after you chain, let's say, at like Shack or a long wall. If you're wondering why it's in the 50 50 tile category, it's because the killer can mind game it easily if you camp the pallet or if you screw up your pathing even by a little. So it's not just a perfect pallet. Like I said, this is a 50 50 pallet. It's not really a specific way to loop this. I usually use pallet gyms for like last resort. Like if I'm chaining something and I don't want to use a Shack pallet or a long wall pallet, I'll go to this one instead. If they are mind gaming over here, and let's say you're on the pallet, instead of holding right here, if I were you, I would try and hold right here because the killer has to swing all the way around something to hit you instead of just going right here and then immediately getting you if you're holding over here because they could actually hit you through that. It's a little bit more distance they have to cover and it's a lot easier to react that way because you can see them usually, you can hear them. So I would personally stay on that side. 
if the killer is trying to mind game over here. Change downs are like they have a weird vault location and can be very strong when used correctly. However, I don't really know where to categorize these tiles mainly because they rely on your skill level, so just keep that in mind. Alright, next we got the variant gym. Now, this is one of the versions of the variant gym. This is one I see the most. If you want to vault it like this, this is the best way to go across from it. This is the best way to run it, in my opinion. If you're coming from the top side, you can run it like this as well. And then you can loop all the way around and then follow the path I did originally. There's a few blind spots. A killer can mind game you right here. And a killer can mind game you right here. So keep an eye out for that. Locker gems are tiles with one window and one pallet and a fuck ton of lockers. I wonder where the name came from. These tiles have a long wall-like window that can be abused if you fast vault well. Killers can mine this tile fairly easily, but the pallet is really safe when thrown, making it quite strong when the pallet is still up. Alright, here is a locker gym. This is where the lockers would be and this is where the pallet would be, although the pallet can be down here as well, I believe. Um, it really depends on the way you're looking at it. Uh, you really want to loop like around here on the locker side and hit that. However, the killer will usually stay around this section and mind game you. So it's really up to you to decide when you should vault, when you should go around. Um, a, a good killer will make it feel like you can't vault ever. So in that situation, you can just throw the pallet down. It's not that big of a deal. You can find a few blind spots. There's like one right here. And then maybe on the pallet side, they can usually hit around if they're good enough to like hide their red stain and then like quickly swing if you're on this side of the pallet so camping the pallet isn't the best thing honestly i would just pre-drop this this is like one of the few tiles i will say to pre-drop i don't believe in pre-dropping i think it's a stupid idea i think greeting a lot of tiles especially against a lot of killers in this game is the best thing to do so pre-dropping on this tile is honestly i i wouldn't frown upon it i i would think you're pretty smart honestly if you pre-drop on this tile in conclusion, that'll wrap up the common tiles in the game. I hope this tutorial helped you, and if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I have a Twitch and a Twitter if you would like to follow these. I would greatly appreciate a like on this video since it took me quite a bit to make. Anyways, thanks for watching, and peace out gamers. Also, let me know if I should show you guys how to loop the main buildings in the game, because I could probably do that pretty quickly.